The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. Thank you, Steve, for two great hours. And we have programming right through the day today. Straight off to me being Wednesday. Get it right today. <laughs> Yesterday, I thought it was Monday. Uh, being Wednesday, we've got Larry Pesavento coming on. Straight off to me. Fabulous show, as always. And then we've got even, even, even more opportunities to go through uh, technical analysis. We've got uh, we've got Daryl Martin, we've got Dave White, we've got, uh, being Wednesday, we've got Tom O'Brien, 4 o'clock till 6. And uh, I believe there's a show after 6 o'clock as well. And that show is with Tom discussing um, the wellness, the mind. And um, that's uh, really fascinating. Uh, it's, it's become a very topical subject. And um, just the, the, the concept of... Um, thoughtfulness in terms of um, looking at yourself in in a in, in an objective way. So very, very very interesting. So um, yes, yeah, sun out. We've got sun right as you said that the sun just suddenly came out. We didn't have as bad a storm at all last night. It was uh, really. Um, it was a blizzard because there was a wind of over 40 miles an hour, I think they have. Um, and it blew around, but mostly it was not bad. They got the streets, my street, thank goodness, because there's a hill, steep hill they get to very quickly. Now, uh, let's go to the nitty-gritties of the nitty-gritties here. The E... Uh, the, the, the E mini S and P uh, uh, 500 March future uh, is trading down only a dollar seventy-five. I consider this is very important because it's in a rectangle formation, and holding the nine-period exponential moving average, which is at 1834, it's done that every single day since it broke out above it, on the um, after being way below it on the 13th. Remember that horrible day, uh, down 170 in the Dow, and then it snaps back the next day and goes right above it. So for one, two, three, four, five, six sessions, it's been above the nine EMA. It's getting harder to do with the technicals. The MACD is, is, has not seen the green line above the red line. That's very important in my work. And uh, the stochastic is under 80% at 73%. The 120-minute ch uh, chart has just set up a nice, big, fat rectangle pattern between 1845.75 and, let me just draw that in there, and 1826. Within that, there's a much narrower range, which I... I I give to I credit the 120 minute chart really for pointing it out and that is a break above 1841 to 1843 really sets up a chance to test the highs if we can do that but believe me a break below 1833 to 1831 says uh oh wrong way we're going back down to test the 200 period moving average at 1828 so this is quite an important moment we've got a number of uh, situations that are going on let me just show you something I'll take this away. Now, my, my subscribers know that I, I use uh, my Dow Quartet with UTX as, as really a, a pretty key uh, indicator, um, and that says that GE, IBM, Triple M, and UTX over the decades has, I've watched these very closely. Sometimes we are long, sometimes we are short. Most of the time, I just treat them as uh, objects to be watching for a key in, uh, a key metrics to follow. Now look at this, if I go to the GE chart, GE has been acting very poorly and it took out the the Roman candle, second Roman candle that we've seen since the 28.09 peak D, uh, top. Let me just quickly say, in the Chapman Wave methodology, very simple technique in its concept. It identifies the lowest, most obvious low bar and merely counts each successively higher peak. 
until you get to peak D. Peak D is where a number of things can happen, but it's also where you become a little bit cautious. It is the target for the buy signal to go to a buy mode to a peak D. And it also says that at peak D, as the Chapman Wave song goes, I haven't sung the song for a long time. Well, you're lucky for that. Uh, but the song itself says the wave goes to A then to uh, B, even the anticipated C and D. That's when it flashes a cautionary light. But all you got to do is make your stops real tight. Um, of course, it depends where you start the, start the vocalese, um, which register. If you start in the soprano and you're male, you have a little problem with the high notes. Um, so this is where it flashes a caution light. And lo and behold, uh, GE started to go below the nine period moving average and has gone to a trough. See if there's no new low today below 2604. And that's questionable because it's a lousy candle again. Peak E in the weekly chart. And a leg E with a chance of a peak E, very, very good chance that, actually, I'm going to say that there's just a really good chance that in, the, in January we will not take out the high of 2809, uh, the recovery high uh, of December. And then you will get a peak E, and that says, be careful, because 2526 will be the target. And if that gets taken out, you get this uptrend inside track Chapman Wave support level, very uh, critical, and that will be around about 2316. But that's not the issue. 2366 is a 200-period exponential moving average support in GE. GE has been hinting, as it often does, by moving up, before the general market turns up or down, before the general market turns down, that we have more than a bifurcated market, meaning a split market at this point. We have fewer and fewer leaders. Look at IBM. IBM trading down 726 after a peak D. Once again, we've got your peak D. Peak D in the week, uh, in the daily, right through the 200 period exponential moving average, making a high of 190.81. 190.81 and a low today of 179 that's 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 10 points right there 11 points and uh, the weekly chart looks like it's about to give up those fantastic gains that it had recently and the monthly chart once again had a Chapman Wave flat base restart which says once you break below the left side support almost always the bar that takes it out is the bar that tries to get back into the arch formation, which it did. Got stopped at the nine period moving average at about 186. Um, this is the monthly chart. Uh, and the month hasn't finished, so we don't know yet if it's going to go higher. But G, uh, IBM looks like it's got a problem. Triple M has gone to a peak D in the daily, gaps down, tries to retest it, and is now down 54 cents in the daily. Uh, um, at that peak D, peak F slash B, and I'm suspecting from the look of the MACD and the stochastic, this could very well turn out to be a peak F in the weekly if the low bar of last week, 134.57, is taken out. It's trading a point high at 136.47 right now. So I'm watching Triple M, and it's a leg E in the month monthly. 3M company, multinational conglomerate. Uh, they don't center their entire product line around those um, sticky and sticky notes. Now let's go to the uh, G uh, UTX, which is my pilot light indicator. What um, UTX does is often v very key to my analysis, not necessarily making big decisions, but it's my analysis of what I am looking at in terms, I call it the pilot light Dow stock, in terms of the 30, what can uh, come next? And it's in leg E at resistance in the Chapman wave. United Technologies trading at 115.81 news, uh, earnings news today. It's only up 82 cents after hitting 118.20. It's down uh, two and three quarter points. But this is leg E in the daily. Stochastic is very poor at 75%. MACD is okay. So I'm anticipating uh, if I if UTX starts to break down and in three days' time is underneath 114, no, let's call it 113.70, so it's probably made a short-term top here, and that makes the leg E in the weekly chart a potential peak E going into next week. Got to watch this really closely. And I want to go to Janet in British Columbia. Hi, Janet. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, Basil. I Good. just wanted your opinion on the volatility index. 
I have a position in it currently. I got in around 1550. Okay, so you're talking about 1550 for the UVXY, the 200% yes. long the VIX, is that correct? Yes. Okay, good. So I'm looking at the volatility index right now, and this entire, <clears throat> if I could draw this right now, I would be putting in a circle around this cluster. It's, called what I, it's what I call a cluster formation. And cluster formations have a tendency to become either a, a fulcrum to go continue in the direction they came from in a measured move to the to the side that they came from. In other words, this would be a measured move that would take it from the bounce of 13, this is the VIX itself, 1365 to uh, 13 to 11. So that's about two points. So it would be two points down and that would take it to the 11 area um, or it becomes a reversal back to the direction that it just came from. In this case, that would be up. So now let me do this. I want to move to the um, weekly chart. The weekly chart, because we're not even in the middle of the week yet, we need to go at least another couple of hours before we get to the middle of, the, of this week. So to call it, to be looking at the weekly chart means that I have to speculate. I'm speculating based on my Dow chart and I just wanted to tell subscribers just to remind them that I will be giving an update, a very, very rare update today at 12.30. So a couple of very good reasons. Uh, we've had um, one stock that we just bought yesterday doing very nicely, one that we bought two days ago doing quite nicely. Um, I, want to, I want to just give parameters for those, plus there might there'll probably be two new positions. So now let's get to the volatility index. The monthly chart so far is telling me nothing other than the nine period expenditure moving average at 1474 is going to be really critical on the last day of January, which would be last day of January, last day of January, stretch over and see. I think that's a Thursday, is that a Friday? It's a Friday. Ah, Friday. January the 30th, uh, 31st, of course. Um, so we've got a, we've got 10 days to go, not trading days. 10 market days will be, not market days. One, two, three, four, five, about eight market days to go. So we can't really tell, other than to say there's a, there's a chance that the lowest low that was made of 11.69 is above the 11.05 major, major low that was made back in March of uh, last year, it's been, uh, what is that, nine months, uh, nine months. So I'm anticipating that we're getting in time ready for some kind of a bounce in the volatility index in the monthly. That's speculation. The weekly chart right now is on at 1307 is on the nine period exponential moving average. This is what I'm going to suggest. You've got a position in the UVXY. Yeah. And I'm just going to that right now. And oh, I forgot to put that. We had a position at some point at 16.11. I think we took a 20 cent loss. I like to take tiny little losses because when this kicks up and starts to move, it moves very quickly. Today it made a lower low, but this becomes leg D. I think that's what you wanted to hear. <laughs> We've got a leg D in the, uh, the daily going to the downside. This is the second sell mode, which might be completely the last one went from 18.11 up to 2206. I'll be right back with Janet. Jan you take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain and this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 50 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, everyone. We're back. We're back with Janet in British Columbia. We're looking at the VIX index. The VIX index is the volatility index. Um, and it. I, I know most of the time you hear it referred to as uh, uh, greed or... Um, I, I don't like to use terms like that. To me, it's buying pressure and selling pressure. Two words, buying pressure, selling pressure. It's just as simple as that. And if the VIX starts to rally, and one of the reasons why during the break I went through the IWM and the iShares Russell 2000 ETF and the QQQ Trust Series, is I want you to see, I'd say to subscribers, where is it, number three in my list of 20 bullet points every day in my trader's corner, um, I'd said, uh, finally, we have a leg D in the QQQ uh, series, although the 120 minutes suggests another new high, that's a recovery high is possible. Why? Because it was at a C, and now it's gone to leg D. Now, this is very interesting, because when you put the whole put pari, pot puri of, of uh, the puzzle together, Janet, all I can say is that under every other condition, I would have felt for a few days now, getting the UVXY or anything to do with the volatility index on the long side would be absolutely the thing to do. The more I've studied this, the more I've looked at it and said, you know what, it, it, it diminishes every day so quickly. I mean, just the other day it was at 1675, 
and then it hit 11.69 and it bounced to 14.35. These are big percentages. I don't have to tell anybody who actually uh, owns, um, uh, this is the VIX itself, but who owns the UVXY, that you can see... Um, you can see your capital shrink very quickly. In fact, um, when the market uh, dropped on the 13th of January, uh, the 13th of January right there, uh, 13th, where did it go to? Right there. It popped. It went from 15.02 to 16.99. Uh, That's a big percentage, but for this thing, uh, it's just like the downtrend is, is so entrenched that it's going to be very hard. Here's my recommendation. If you have patience and you're prepared, and I know it's going to be, I think it's a 4 for 1, I think it's a 4 for 1 reverse split at some point within about a week or so. Um, if you are prepared to hold this as a two-part thing, one is partly insurance, against the portfolio where you might have long positions and the other is that if you hold it long enough even if it dropped to 12 or 13 this has a way of spiraling when the market finally tanks and more than making up for any losses so if you are prepared to hold this for a year there's a chance that prior to the split being at 1491 right now it'll reach uh, 23 to 26 it'll double 28. So that's a... I wasn't planning on holding it. <laughs> I, I, that's, why, that's why I wanted to just give you the scenarios. So this is my thinking. Um, as far as I can see from the deterioration in certain parts of the market, there is still strength in the IBB. And until I get signals in the IBB, that's the not only the IBB, but it'll be the all the different indexes that I, I focused this morning uh, for my for my subscribers on uh, that have to do, have to do with the biotech uh, sectors um, until that breaks down I think there's a chance that we could just keep rotating and the Dow will be a little bit weaker and uh, maybe the sun in the next, next three days you might suddenly get some strength in the Dow but basically what we're looking at is that the, the UVXY is at a point right now where the low today was 1469 the high is a 15 round number high if today the UVXY can close at 15 oh anywhere around 1526 now, that's, that's only 30-something cents away, but in percentage terms, that's actually quite a big percentage. But if it can do that, I would say that you've got a really good chance that today's low of 14.69 to about 14.32 could very well turn out to be at least a short-term short low as the volatility index is getting ready for a nice pop. How long that lasts is going to be tough in this rotational market. So I... When you say to me, I don't intend holding it that long, my suspicion is that in your case, if you're in, in the higher 15s, I would not give it more than a one. Today's low of 1469 was pushing the envelope for you, I bet. So yeah. I, would not, I, would not I would not like to see today's low get taken out. I'd put in a stop. You can always get back in because if, if for whatever reason the market manages to climb in the next two, three days, that UVXY will pull back underneath that 1460 level. So make it a fairly tight stop. You want to see it close at the 1520 something area today and tomorrow to be a down day in the market. Hope it helps you, Janet. Thank you. Very much. With over three decades of trading experience, Andy Hecht brings a tremendous amount of knowledge and expertise to each weekly issue of his newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report. The Technomental Commodity Report gives you Andy's unique technomental analysis of the commodities market, a combination of technicals and fundamental analysis which he has developed and perfected over his many years of trading. The Technomental Commodity Report is only $49 a month, and right now you can get a full month-long trial subscription while paying absolutely nothing. See for yourself the kind of weekly report Andy delivers to his subscribers every Thursday morning. You'll receive specific stock, ETF, and option trades based on Andy's analysis, so no futures account is required. 
for all the details and to start your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, visit TFNN.com today. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. I just want to go through a couple of things here. I can't believe that I lost all my data on MasterCard when I had it just the other day, and I never got shut down for any reason. Uh, it's very upsetting. Uh, let me just do this. That's T... Oh, okay. So um, we're going to go to Garo in Newport Beach, California. Hi, Garo. How are you? Very good. Thank you, sir. How about you? I'm well, thank you. I'm a little fr I'm not a little. I'm now absolutely furious because I, I have no idea what I did uh, with my trade station to lose this data. And uh, it's very, very upsetting in that... Um, so that'll be a D right there. It doesn't take me long. It took me, what, three minutes to do the entire monthly chart of, uh, of uh, MasterCard and the weekly, and I'm just finishing right now. The, this is A, B, C, so that's an E, an F, and a red G. I don't think that that's right. I think I had done it before, and I was going to... to a D. If you All want right, to, so... If you want, I can... If you want, I can call you tomorrow. No, I'm gonna, I'm already. No, you're fine. Uh, okay. 
Now, the question is, you want to know something about a master car trading at <laughs> 8303. It's up a dollar nineteen, and I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to go to my 120-minute chart on MasterCard, and it broke through the, the uh, SAR, um, and my guess is that you are long. No, I didn't do nothing. Today I sold it. Yesterday I bought it. Yesterday I bought it at eight hundred and sixteen dollars. Ah, okay. Yeah, today, yeah, today I sold it at eighty-three dollars. So I made oh, my money. But you made here, your money. Very good. Yes. Okay. Here, um, on a weekly chart, on a weekly chart, um, if, if this goes down and hits eighty dollars and forty-one cents. There is a possibility that it can go as low as seventy six dollars and eighty four cents. Do you do you see that? Okay. Or or on on a on a monthly chart, if you bring the monthly chart, there is a gap in in December uh, of tenth. Uh, there is a gap between uh, the, the between the high at seventy six ninety one. Uh, and uh, the higher of the I I December 11th, it is $80.16. Will that go and fill that gap? All right. So now let's just do this for, for right now. In a MasterCard, it's trading at 83.10, up $1.24. What I'm looking at here, and I have to tell you, this is very upsetting because, let me see, did I lose my visa? No, I didn't. Okay, good. I did the two together just the other day. Right. Um, and yeah, there's a question. Yeah, the question of the Dan, uh, did I lose the data because of a stock split? Well, I, I'll, I'll show you something even funnier about this in a, in a moment. But Visa's trading at 232.18, up 25 cents. Now, they're actually slightly different companies, but the chart patterns very often mimic one another. And I've got this in Leg D. Visa, Visa is a global uh, payment solution uh, company in Leg D. I'd, I was asked about a day or two ago whether I was the Fibonacci expansion. I use a certain Fibonacci expansion. When it gets to two. 2.68, that's when, uh, sorry, 2.61, that's when I start to look at it and I say um, that I'm expecting it to go higher, but it is what I call the coda of the, of the price movement, and that it is at a very, very uh, overbought situation. But the timing, when you get to that level, is really tough because this is where they have some of their biggest price movements as you can see last week was a huge price movement for Visa now I wanted to say that Visa uh, weekly is in leg D after a cup and handle breakout and the daily has gone to a leg D and today is possibly a peak D and that's what we were looking at because we had uh, someone called yesterday and, and he was discussing it because he was long and I said to take a little bit a little bit off at 232 and that's he might want to be putting that back, but we must must watch over the next couple of days how it pulls back underneath 230 to 228 area. Now let's do exactly the same thing with Mastercard. Mastercard right now um, is has has a bounce, but the bounce hasn't gone to the 84.75 high of the 10th. Most importantly, with that is the day before on the 9th there was a round number. Uh, where did I see that? Around number 84 open. 84, 84 yeah. And it went to 80, 84, 75, and now it's pulled back. So 84 is really the number on MasterCard on a closing basis. One out of two days. It needs to close above that level for one out of two days. So it might go there once and pull back, but if on the second day it closes above that, be careful because it's going to retest the highs. But here's the thing, and I'm seeing this on so many stocks. In the weekly chart, there was a doji candle at the high on the week of the 10th of, um, 10th of January. That's not good enough for me. There was a silent doji. This is a technique that I have a, 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 a webinar that I gave on the silent doji. And this is a silent doji on the 3rd of January with a high of 83.94. That's telling me that MasterCard is beginning to get in the weekly chart, it's beginning to get to a level where it's starting to give signs that say, be careful, the upside is very limited from here. 
but we've got to now be looking to the MACD and stochastic, and stochastic's at 92% good, but starting to decline. On balance, volume and relative strength are starting to decline, and the fast moving of the MACD is the one big positive here, and that's why you've gone sideways. So now, this is what I'm going to look at. I grabbed the 120 minute chart, which went to peak A, B, C, D. I love this. How many times do we see these Ds? It's just uncanny. So this is A to B. You got out just perfectly, Gara. Now this is what I'm going to suggest to you. I, I would be looking at MasterCard or Visa as potential shorts, but they still have enough residual strength to have sudden spikes to the upside. The fact that even today, in what could have been a generally a weak market, uh, MasterCard had a spike to uh, a, a bounce over the the recent high, uh, and it went to the 80, um, in a round number low of 82, and a high of 83.90, is telling me that to get a short position that is longer term, I have to have the patience to wait for it to actually close underneath 80, probably underneath 79, yeah, underneath 80, because it has not closed under, under the nine period exponential moving except for once. Back in August, of the, August, the week of the 30th of August, did it close under the nine EMA, and that was just a brief dip underneath because it, it was going above, oh my goodness, from... April of last year, April the 26th, it's only closed once underneath the 9 EMA. So I'm not very quick to go short on MasterCard or Visa. Uh, let's do one at a time. MasterCard, right at this particular moment, unless I'm looking for a quick trade and I get the technique that says if it closes under the 9 EMA in the daily, which is at 82.49, so if it closes under 82.30, there's a good chance to have a quick dip to the 80.50 area, a point and three quarters, maybe two and a quarter. And I'd have to go step by step. One of the reasons being that the, the monthly chart has given me no signal yet. Of course, that's the latest one that will give me a signal. The weekly will give it before the monthly, and the monthly, the daily will give it before the, the weekly. So I'm watching this, and there is a smallish Chapman Wave Roman candle uh, the last week, and that says that here again, it's the same sort of thing. If MasterCard closes under 80, trades under 81.18 to maybe 81.10, let's call it 81.10, there's a very good chance that it's going to retest the low of last week. So I'm going to go step by step, but I'm getting signals that say there are so many stocks that look like this. There's a slow rollover because it's taken so long. This bull market has just made everyone afraid to short. You can even see what's happened in the uh, VIX, the UVXY, which just, it's, it's had a terrible time uh, um, actually rallying and holding a rally. That's going to change. I'm almost sure of it within the next, could be <laughs> the next couple of weeks, could be even within the next few days. That, that could change. But I would go step by step. So now your, your, your original statement was that if it was to break down, it could pull back, could even pull back to 80, 80, 80 and a half. Well, 80.58 is the nine period exponential moving average in the weekly chart. Now, would I buy it there? I'd say, you know what? I would be looking at it as making an H pattern and it might bounce but it's already then giving me signs that says it wants to, for the first time, start to trade underneath the nine-period moving average. So I hope that analysis gives you some sense of what I'm looking at. Yes, sir. My number is $80.41. I have to wait for that number to come. You're absolutely right. This is going to go up, and this is going to go up from here to $85.51. Well, that would make a new recovery high. Yeah. And yeah, then it's so that, gonna collapse it's gonna collapse from there. And when it comes to eighty four forty one, then it's the time to short it. This is the way my chart is telling me. Okay, so, well 
I, I'm watching it closely. It's had a very quick peak A, peak B, peak C, underneath a very unusual peak G that was made on the 10th. That could be a G slash C, and that would say, hey, be careful, because you could still make uh, a, a one more pop to the upside. This is almost like one of the uh, biotech stocks. There's tremendous energy here. I'm with you. So thank you very much for calling, and congratulations on a great trade. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Let's go to Travis Bye. in St. Louis, Minnesota. Hi, Travis. How are you? I'm doing great. Good morning. Good morning. So you'd like to look at, wow, look at this, huh? HPQ, man. Yeah, this has been your baby, huh? Yeah. Well, HPQ, Hewlett Packard, um, does printers and a whole bunch of other uh, uh, techn technological gadgets and things. Uh, that's going to be 2870. Give me one second. I thought I'd finish this. 2870, 2869. So it's an ABC. Oh, this is what's called an overlapping wave in the Chapman wave. Overlapping wave. Let me show it to you here. And then what it does is it breaks out and it goes to at least a peak D. And then you've got to be a bit careful because once it's finished that, it can have a, a sudden move back to the lip of the breakout, which would be at 2870. Uh, it's trading at 28,997 right now, up seven cents. HPQ, it's had a fabulous, you know, this is such an interesting stock because when you go to Staples or in any place where they have all this different uh, office equipment, you see so many Hewlett Packard. Uh, um, uh, you know, different different pieces of the puzzle that you'd be looking at if you had a home office, and it's right there. And yet, they had such a terrible, terrible 2011, 2000, into 2012. <clears throat> What's with my voice? And um, now, all of a sudden, because it's at 88.92 in the in the stochastic in the in monthly, and the MACD is strong, I have no choice but to put an up arrow in leg B, which is above the 200 period moving average, which says that in this rotational market, Hewlett Packard is still looking very, very good from all the different times that we've spoken about this. It's leg C in the weekly. I'm, you've been long for a while, right? No, I'm not long at all. Oh, you're not long. Oh, no, okay. I, cause I, I, was t I, was saying, I was saying I was looking. This is actually on my short list, but I haven't tried anything on it yet. Well, I, I, you know, uh, it would, emotionally. Not yet. I'm not ready to do it today, but I'm saying in the next maybe couple of weeks I would like uh, to Ah, okay. I, I would agree thing. with you, yes, as a trade. And I would, I would have agreed with you emotionally. I did do the stock, but for some reason I kind of forgot that it had broken out above the 200 period moving average in both the weekly and the monthly, I'm going to make the recommendation that you have patience, even though it's in leg E right now, stochastics at 91% and the MACD is good. The market is very weak today. Well, the Dow is very weak. The, the S&P is down only two, but it, it just hasn't had follow through strength from the other day. And yet, Hewlett Packard is up six cents. I'm going to make the suggestion that if you do any shorting, it's it's with the belief that it will be a shorter term trade and that you should take your money because the support that it's got between 28.10 and 27, well, 27.76 is the 200 period uh, weekly uh, moving average support and the 9 period moving average is just crossed positive there. So that's a positive move. Uh, I'm not sure that it's going to go much lower than to the 2720 area to 26, 2630, which of course is a very nice move if you are short, but at this particular point I'm holding off on thinking short in, in Hewlett Packard, even though it's in leg E right now, because it has tremendous support at 2918 to 2885 on the daily chart. I just need to, you know what, I'm going to take a moment here to look at the 120, give me a moment here, I want to look at the 120 minute chart. I'd like to get the different time frames for Hewlett Packard because it had its comeuppance and now it's, it's really on the way up. So let's okay. look at it a little more carefully, I'll show it after the break, I'll be back. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. The king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer? It gets better. A 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed. Mastering Probability. Available on the homepage of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, hey folks. We're back, and there are some counter-trend stocks. These are stocks like I identified a long time ago, Boston Scientific, a bunch of stocks that had uh, a, a right, right aid, that had the tremendous potential having just been beaten down to the single digits to climb and go against any other trend. Um, and I've got a feeling that Hewlett Packard is in the process of doing that. Now, the big thing is that it's at resistance, and that was a peak e-top in the weekly back in <clears throat> at, at 30 round number high. 
back in the week of the 17th of February 2012. Let me just type in 30. Boy, unbelievable how many times you see these round numbers. Well, it goes all the way down to, I don't think it went to the, yeah, it went to 9, didn't it? Uh, it went to 11.35. So 11.35 didn't go to single digits. And now it's, um, it's over double. It's at 29.96. That's the resistance it needs to break above 30. If it does that, <clears throat> then the very ugly candle of the week of the 19th of August of 2011 with a high of 34 round number, that would be my target for the coming number of months that we're looking at. On the downside, because the daily is, let me move this back again, is in leg E, <clears throat> if there's a general market turnaround, and this is just not bear market material, folks. Look at this. The Dow is struggling to get back. Now it's only down 56. The s and is only down a dollar. This is a bear market when you've changed the phase from bull to bear, every opportunity sees lower prices, and the S&P would lead the Dow probably. So something's going on. This is bifurcation, and there's still enough residual strength here that to go short a little too quickly is one of the reasons why I said uh, uh, earlier on to Janet that you've got to have a, some kind of a stop on that UVXY, even though everything about it says it's really close to getting to the 16, maybe even the 17 area. Just this is the kind of market we're in. So, uh, Travis, I'm going to make the suggestion. Any short and Hewlett Packard, it could come in the next couple of days. That would maybe make peak C if it's a lower high next week, all of next week without making a new high. But I see a lot of support in the 29 to 28 area, and I'm going to be putting it on my list to probably think of it in terms of going long as a recovery stock. So I hope that helps you. My short list for the time being. Yeah. So, and, and, and you know what? You're good at this. You'll you'll know exactly where to put your your buy stop because it'll be very clear. If it's going to come down, it's going to come down real quick. Otherwise, it's going to have a high level consolidation. Thanks so much for calling. Always appreciate it. Got it. Have a good day. Thank you. Let's look at British. Uh, British uh, BC is, uh, of course, Basil Chapman's BC, but Brunsby Core, boats, engines, bowling, all that uh, recreational stuff. I had a question about the monthly chart. Perfect left side, right side, price time match after making a rare. I think I'm going to take a little time on Friday. I mean, on Friday, I'm going to do quite a bit of work on BC because it has so many techniques that I'd like to discuss. It had that rare peak C1 and C2, and it had a round number open. On the C2, that was a fraction low at 47, it opens, the high was 49.77, but the major high was 49, uh, 49 uh, 85. I wrote 85, yeah, 85 back, uh, on, uh, the, uh, back in November of 2004. Comes all the way down to $1.82, has a huge rally. Where does it go back to? It goes back to a peak D in the left side, right side price time match. It actually took one month extra from the left side to the right side. And what does it do? It goes to 4708 two points below the previous high. Now it's vulnerable to a pullback in the monthly chart in making a peak D. And you've got a peak E in the weekly chart at uh, 47.08, and you've got the, the daily at 42.62. So I, I, it could bounce from here, but it's not looking very good. So, folks, let me just quickly give you this for the Dow, because the day is young. If the Dow closes underneath 16,320, that's going to say, uh-oh, it's going to drag the rest of the indices lower. If it closes into the 16,000, I would put it into the 16,390s. I'd say save the day again. Save Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar the forex market, and more. 
you'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for.